Hey everybody, Steve here. Welcome to the video. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about getting your RadioMaster TX16S to work with Velocidrone. If you've recently purchased Velocidrone and uh, and or a TX16S, and you installed Velocidrone and you got to this screen right here, and you're one click away from major disappointment, aren't we? Look at that controller not found. What in the heck is going on? I got nothing. My controller's plugged in. Everything and nothing's going. So assign a controller. No, I'm moving sticks on my controller. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. All right. So if this is happening to you, stick around because we're going to figure it out. Hey, did you know that this was video number 15 in my Radio Master TX 16S series? Yep, you heard right, number 15. So if you've got any questions about this radio, we basically started at zero. And we've gone all the way from zero to fairly complex. And now essentially we're having a little bit of fun. So if you check the description below, you will see a link to the playlist. And I'll go ahead and just kind of flash the playlist here in front of you. Like I said, we've done a whole bunch of stuff. And in video number 14, we took a look at uh, Liftoff, which is an amazing, amazing simulator. If you're interested in FPV, first person view or getting into FPV racing, you really can't beat liftoff uh, when it comes to that perspective. But shifting gear is one of the things that I really, really love about Velocidrone and it, and it, and it, kicks, uh, it kicks liftoffs. But if you fly line of sight and or you don't have goggles yet or whatever, Velocidrone is way better than liftoff in helping you become adjusted to flying line of sight. So if you're a line of sight pilot, Velocidrone is definitely the one for you. I mean, it still has um, amazing FPV capabilities and everything like that, but just strictly from a standpoint of standing in front of the quad and learning how to fly it, uh, Velocidrone takes the cake there. And I don't mean this to be a, a review of either piece of software. I just wanted to highlight the things that I love about both of them. And I, I'm really an advocate of having both uh, because they can teach you different things. Anyhow, let's quit the jibber jabber and get rolling. All right, so let's start diagnosing why this is a problem. If you go down to your uh, bottom left and click your start button, and I've got a little shortcut here for control panel, but uh, you probably don't, so just start typing in control, and you will start, you will see control panel here. We're gonna pull up control panel. We're gonna go to hardware and sound. And the reason why your radio is not talking to your Velocidrone is because it has the wrong USB driver, or at least that's a very likely possibility. So I'm going to click on device manager right here and take a look at the list. Now we're assuming here that your radio is plugged into your computer in USB mode. And what we're going to do is we're going to search this list right here and I've already found it. It's a lib USB win 32 devices. Boom. Better USB HS. That is your radio master TX 16 S and that is the incorrect driver for whatever reason. It just ain't right. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix that. But let's jump over here and take a look at something else first. Go to devices and printers and just click on devices and printers. Now, your Radio Master TX16S may appear in the devices column and it may even recognize it as a joystick, okay? But don't panic if you're in this lowly unspecified column down here without the right icon. It doesn't matter where you are. All right, so what we're going to do is whether it's here or down here, um, you're just going to go up to the icon and right click on it and go to properties. And you can see that there's a hardware tab. I click on the hardware tab. Now, this better USB HS, we're going to want to highlight it, make it blue. All right, and go to properties. It's going to pull up a new window like so. All right, so what we're going to do from here is from the general tab, we're going to go to change settings. And then we're going to go to driver. Now you're going to see one of two things here. All right. Number one, you're going to see what I'm seeing right now where I have an opportunity to roll back the driver. If this is an option for you, you can click roll back driver and chances are it will fix the problem. But a guarantee to fix a guarantee to fix the problem for everybody is if you do the following. Click update driver and then say browse my computer for drivers and then say let me pick from a list of available drivers and then come down to the bottom of the list and find USB 
input device. This is the correct driver, no matter what. So I'm going to go ahead and select it and I'm going to say next and then boom. Now it's the driver for this USB device and I can click and I can say, okay, and I can say close. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug and then plug back in my radio master TX 16 S. So it disappears. There we go. Now, if you have the ability to right click on it and go to gain controller settings, and you see something, or even if it says FR Skytranis, that's that's fine. Um, but if you can click this and you get this little uh, thing right here, at this point, it does not matter which direction the little plus sign moves when you move your sticks. All that's important is that one of your sticks moves the plus sign and then the other stick has some sort of effect on one of those lines. This is a good indicator that everything's gonna be fine. But if you don't get this sub menu, I still wouldn't panic because that's not the real test. The real test is going into Velocidron and seeing if uh, if it recognizes it. So let's go ahead and do that. You're gonna to wanna to go into your TX16S and create a new model and just go through the wizard and let it pick the most basic uh, characteristics of flight, which is AETR. And once you do that with your new model, uh, you don't have to do any fancy settings or anything like that. Setting everything straight across the board, 100% is gonna work just fine. And we're gonna to go to controller. Beep. And then we're going to assign the controller, move stick on the controller. All right. So there's that. And then let's go ahead and assign sticks. And it wants us to go like that and go like that and go like that and go like that and center the sticks. Stick my sticks are centered. And click over, click up, click out, whoops, and click up. Move roll stick. Boom. Move pitch. Boom. Move yaw. Boom. Move throttle. Boom. All right, so now I'm my throttle. All right, so everything there is good. Everything there is good. And there it is. So for those of you who understand inputs and mixes, uh, you can add uh, several inputs if you want to, and then you know further define those inputs with the mixes. Like for example, I've got this switch right here. And what I can do is, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on camera angle and click on it and I set the access and boom there it is now that stick is my camera angle and one of the other things that I like to do is the reset button the reset is right here so I'm gonna click on reset and that's my toggle and there and you can see that it turned green over on the left hand side and the other one actually turned kind of a, a, a brown well I guess it's orange to match the camera angle so that's just basically two. You can set up a bunch of other buttons and switches and stuff like that and, and have access to all of this stuff. And for those of you who don't understand inputs and switches, I have a video for that. So um, just check out the uh, playlist and uh, look for the video on inputs and switches, uh, as well as the video on adding a new model. So now that we're good to go, we can go like this and... Uh, Bing. I spent an extra five bucks to get an add-on package that has this these monster quads in it. Well, that's not a monster quad, but that's a monster quad right there. Uh, and the reason for that is because if you're practicing line of sight, uh, it's a lot easier to see you know one of these huge quads than it is just a little itty bitty micro up in the air. Uh, and I love the lights and everything like that. So that was four bucks that I spent uh, a little bit extra. And I'm gonna go ahead and select the quad. All right, my wings might be a little too big to fit through the box. Hey, but I fit through the box. Now, you could run the course, or you could chastise this, uh, you could chastise this, uh, Cessna. Now, I don't recommend doing this in real life. But it is real fun to do in the game. So anyhow, this is FPV mode, and this is not really what the game is about. I'm not really here to show you what the game is about. I'm really more here to show you it as it pertains to... Can I get through here with my big old wings? Hey, I got through. Alright, so there's FPV mode. You get the general principle. So if you're a line of sight flyer, Velocidrone has got lift off beat hands down. Um, your ability to be able to get up to speed in terms of flying line of sight on, on this sim is actually much better than the other one. 
And in addition to the line of sight flying, this one is also pretty darn awesome at first person view as well. But this is, in my opinion, the major differentiator between the two, and that is how cool it is to be able to fly line of sight and how realistic it is and how much it will help you uh, when it comes to the real thing. All right, let's take a real fast look at how you can get this amazing game sim, game sim, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just go to Velocidrone.com. Pretty darn simple. And lots and lots of information here. Now, my whole intention for this particular video was to show how Velocidrone integrates with the TX-16S. But if you're interested in getting to know the game better, just come here and watch this video. It's pretty amazing. And uh, obviously, the manufacturer of the game is going to put together the best video as far as showcasing all of its uh, uh, coolness, or whatever you want to call it. But there's that. So basically, just come here and go to download. And uh, you got to register. All right, so if you go to the shop page, you can find where to buy the thing. It's uh, 16.99 pounds, so that's right around $20 in US. I've got some add-on packages here, including a micro class, combat. Um, here's the mega class. That's the one that I got, so that I could get that that big old big old quad that I could actually see up in the sky. And it looks like they got something else over here. So check all that stuff out, and essentially what you'll do is you'll just go ahead and add it to cart. And you get taken to this page and you fill out the page and pay your money and get in and download the software and you'll be having just as much fun as I have been having. All right, so that about wraps it up for this video. Uh, I hope you found value in the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, and uh, do me a favor, hit that little bell because I've got lots and lots and lots of more quad slash drone slash multi rotor slash UAV slash whatever you want to call it. Lots and lots of more videos to come. And if you really like the video, do me a favor and share it on social media, post it to discussion boards and tell your mom and everybody. Word of mouth is the best way for me to grow my channel and uh, be able to continue making more videos on your behalf. So uh, I appreciate you watching. I'm Steve and I'll see you in the next video.